Hey guys, this is Austin. The new Galaxy S8 is promising to shake up the smartphone game, but LG might just have something to say about that. Big shout out to LG for hooking us up with the G6 a little bit early. Now they are not sponsoring this video, but I am curious to see how it stacks up. Take a look inside the box and we have the G6. Now while the Galaxy S8 is getting all the hype for having essentially no bezel on a giant screen, if you take a look at this, it's not actually that far off. There's not a lot in the box. We have the power adapter as well as a USB-C cable. Now this is in comparison to the Galaxy S8, which comes with a really nice pair of AKG headphones in the box. When you look at the G6 next to the Galaxy S8 Plus and the iPhone 7 Plus, you'll see that, well, this just sticks out. The idea of having much thinner bezels just gives you more screen in the same footprint. While the G6 does have thin bezels, it can't quite touch the S8. This is a little bit more of a blocky phone. So it's got a completely flat display compared to the S8, which has curved glass both front and back. If you look closely, you'll see that the G6 has a slightly more pronounced chin, but generally speaking, they do look fairly similar. They both do have those slight curves around the edges of the display, and with so much screen with so little bezel, it does feel like a new generation of smartphone. This isn't a perfect comparison. The Galaxy S8 Plus is a little bit bigger than the G6, but if you have a standard S8, it's going to be about the same size. But what really separates both of these phones from other devices is the aspect ratio. So the G6 has a 2880 by 1440p IPS display, where the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus bumps that up to 2960 by 1440. What that means is that these are much taller screens than what you're probably used to. So if you open a normal app such as YouTube, all this means that you get a little bit of extra vertical real estate, but if you're watching something like video, what that means is that you end up getting black bars on either side of the video. Now this is not exactly a huge deal. I think that the extra screen real estate in 95% of your apps is worth the trade-off, but it does mean that video is not going to fully eat up the screen. It should be no surprise that these are two of the best smartphone displays out right now. So the LG G6 has a couple cool features, like it supports HDR10 as well as Dolby Vision. So as HDR video becomes more and more popular, the G6 is ready to handle it. The S8 might not be a huge upgrade over the last generation, but it is still a terrific looking AMOLED display. So the contrast is absolutely on point, it's nicely saturated, and it gets really bright. So out of the box, it actually runs at a slightly lower 1220 by 1080 resolution. Now there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, it still looks reasonably sharp, and they're doing it, I presume, to save battery. But when you buy a super high resolution, great looking display on a smartphone, you kind of want to, you know, run it at full resolution. As flagships in 2017, build quality isn't an issue with either phone, but I do prefer the design of the Galaxy S8. What's cool here is that because it has glass on front and back, and they both have the same taper, it's a very seamless sort of design. Especially with the very thin frame that goes around the edges, it really does feel great in the hand. Now it's not perfect, it would be nice if this had better speakers instead of one small one on the bottom. And the fingerprint sensor on back is not quite ideal, but taken as a whole, this is an absolutely killer design, I love it. In comparison, the G6 just feels a little bit more old school. So with the flat sort of edges around the side, it just doesn't feel as thin in the hand. And it's not exactly a bad phone, don't get me wrong. It does have nice glass on front and back, and if I had not touched the S8, this would be great. But in comparison, it just doesn't quite hold up. But there are some things I do prefer on the G6, and probably the biggest one is the power button. Not only does it double as the fingerprint sensor, which puts it in a much better location than on the Galaxy S8, but it just feels like a clever use of space, sort of combining your fingerprint sensor, which already has to be there anyway, with a physical button to turn on and off the phone. One area where they are the same is with the IP68 water resistance. So no, you shouldn't go swimming with either of these phones, but I feel like for a flagship in 2017, there is no reason not to have at least some sort of water resistance. It's just nice to know that when you spend this much money on a phone, the little bit of a splash is not going to kill it. Both phones are also running Android 7.0 Nougat with their own skins. Now I prefer what Samsung has done a little bit more this time around. It's a little bit of a cleaner interface, and while they have included things like Bixby, which I'm just not going to use because Google Assistant exists, but for the most part, both phones are completely fine. You can live with either skin, and of course, you know, launchers are a thing. One of the biggest differences between the two phones are specs. So the LG G6 has the older Snapdragon 821, the Galaxy S8 has the brand new Snapdragon 835, so I'm curious to see how they perform. That's actually pretty close. So one of the big advantages of the S8 is that it's an octa-core processor instead of quad-core on the G6, which means that it definitely does win on the multi-threaded side, but on the single-threaded side, it's actually not a huge difference. However, because it's that 835 and it's based on a newer process, in theory, that should help battery life. Cameras might actually be the biggest difference between these two phones. 
So while the Galaxy S8 has the same 12 megapixel camera from the S7 with just a few software tweaks, the LG G6 has dual 13 megapixel cameras. So what's cool about this dual camera on the G6 is that while it was available on the G5, there was a huge difference in quality between the two cameras. Whereas on the G6, yes, the standard camera is a little bit higher quality, it looks a little bit nicer, but there's not a huge difference. And a big part of that is that both cameras have the same 13 megapixel sensor behind them. Now when you jump over to the Galaxy S8, it is not a bad camera by any means. You can get some really killer shots. The big downside though is that it just isn't a huge upgrade over the S7. So Samsung is doing some additional image processing. So essentially, just like the Pixel, they're constantly taking stills and using the best bits of each one to combine it into a final image. And it does look really nice. I do think the S8's a little bit more of a natural image. It's not quite so sharp, and that bigger sensor actually does give you just a little bit of depth of field. One of the big advantages of the Galaxy S8, though, is that new 8-megapixel front-facing camera. Not only is this fairly wide, but it also looks really nice, especially in video. And this is what the G6 front-facing camera looks like. It's not bad, but it does not even come close to the S8. Yeah, even for stills, the G6, it's fine, but yeah. I think the S8 does win out. So this is what video looks like on the LG G6. So it looks a little bit over sharp to my eye, but it is still shooting in 4K. However, one of the cool things is you can seamlessly switch between the two cameras. So this is what the wide angle looks like, and then we can jump right back into the standard. On the other hand, the Galaxy S8 video looks pretty impressive. So not only is saturation nice, but because it does have the bigger sensor, we do get some depth of field here. Also, the stabilization seems to be reasonable. You can see it maybe trips up just a little bit when you make a big move, but it is hard to argue with this camera. I mean, sure, it's not a huge upgrade over the S7, and the G6 camera, especially having the wide angle, both cameras look great, especially for stills. When you look at the whole package, I think it's gonna be really tough to beat this S8. And that kind of tells the story, I'm afraid. The G6 is a good phone, and if the S8 didn't exist, it would be a great phone. But the problem is, this just does so many things so well that it's going to be hard to argue with. So, what do you guys think about the G6 and the Galaxy S8? Let me know in the comments below, and I will catch you on the next one.